The Mushroom Kingdom was finally free of King Koopa's tumultuous troublemaking. Mario and Luigi had chased the rascally reptile into a banishment zone and sealed the entrance with 10,000 bricks. Then, after posing for hero statues and being feted with a kingdom-wide gourmet victory feast, our brave plumbers returned home to Brooklyn. But when the peaceful mushroom people least expected it, King Koopa escaped. Vowing to finally get his villainy right this time, Koopa blasted back to the Mushroom Kingdom in his flying battle wagon, the Doom Ship, and revealed the wildest, weirdest, wackiest danger any Nintendo world has ever faced. King Koopa's kids, Bully Koopa, Big Mouth Koopa Jr., Kooky Von Koopa, Cheatsy Koopa, Cootie Pie Koopa, and the last of the litter, Twins Hip and Hop. Now it was Koopa plus seven Koopalings, and the peaceful Mushroom Kingdom faced 700 times the pandemonium. Princess Toadstool sent an urgent call for help. Only the Super Mario Brothers could stop the Royal Koopa and his obnoxious offspring from wreaking their half-baked havoc. And Super Mario 3, the Super Mario's super mirthful adventures had begun. Our stories can start in several ways. First, they can begin with our heroes and heroine, Mario, Luigi, Princess Toadstool, and Toad. I.e., they set out to rescue a troubled Mushroom Kingdom citizen, or on a personal quest, and then quickly find their lives complicated by King Koopa and his kids. These yucky pipes won't stay! Or, we can start our stories at Castle Koopa, when King Koopa announces his latest wicked and wacky scheme, then selects which one of his Koopalings he'll take along as his assistant. Depending on the specific evil talent required for the Koopa caper, a la Mission Impossible, and then it's up to our heroes to stop them. Koopa doesn't realize he's been tricked! been fooling with my wands. Good, truthful, honest, giant Ninja Mario. That's who. Since there's never been a more rivalrous group of siblings, the Koopalings clamor to win King Koopa's favor and sabotage one another in order to be chosen. When the riot ends, King Koopa and the kid, or kids of his choice, set out to create havoc in all the rich new levels of the Mushroom Kingdom, from Grassland to Desertland, Waterland to Giantland, Skyland to Iceland, and Pipeland to Darkland. Sheesh, Darkland gives me the creeps. That's because it's filled with them. Thanks for reminding me. No time for jokes, Luigi. Make drags! And it's not just the good folk of the Mushroom Kingdom who are in danger. Loading up his giant flying battlecraft, the Doom Ship, with Koopa Troopas and Paragoombas, King Koopa and his off-the-wall offspring even mount occasional surprise assaults on the unmushroom kingdoms of the real world's New York City, Hollywood, Fort Knox, London, Paris, or Hong Kong. If that isn't trouble enough, the Koopa crew has a whole new assortment of malicious and madcap minions to help them harass our heroes and heroine. Boo Diddlies, pesky ghost heads with big teeth and short tempers. Thwomp, a monumental hunk of menacing rock with the ambition to be Mario's tombstone. Patooies, mouth-headed mercenaries who spit spiked cannonballs. And Rocky Wrench, a sneaky turtle with severe overbite who hides in manholes and ambushes unsuspecting plumbers. Wrench attack, Luigi! Let's tool on out of here! In every corner of this colorful land, we find appealing three-dimensional personalities who truly deserve a Mario Brothers rescue. No matter how much we want to laugh at the comedic appearances of our Nintendo-ish cast, they come complete with hearts, minds, dreams, feelings, and all the identifiable human conflicts essential to rich storytelling. Those Mario Brothers are super! job is too big for the Super Mario Brothers, Prince. We'll protect ya. Oh, these shrimpy guys couldn't help the royal fleet. What you don't know, Bird, is that our shrimpy guys can get supercharged. Come on, Luigi. We'll show this parrot. Let's find us a couple of super leaves. Don't let Mario's looks fool you. He may be the shortest, chubbiest, most comedic-looking superhero ever to have his own show, but he always finds an ingenious way to overcome the most overwhelming obstacles in his path and somehow save the day. Even if it takes turning into a flying raccoon with superpowers, the irrepressible Mario will cleverly and bravely do his best to outwit the villainous Koopa clan.
He continues the quest when wiser heads would quit. Like a true plumber, he will show up at any hour of the day or night to solve a crisis that ordinary men refuse to even touch. No matter how many times he's tricked, trapped, or defeated, Mario bounces back. His greatest strength is his unconquerable spirit and his willingness to fling himself selflessly into any situation if justice is at stake. Well, if Junior's here, he could be in big trouble. Mario, Luigi, help! <laughs> Junior! Where are you? Mario couldn't have a better teammate than his younger in age but bigger in size little brother Luigi, even though they approach their adventures with very different attitudes. Luigi always wishes Mario would take more time to weigh the risks before he leaps, swims, or flies into the unknown. But no matter how much he questions Mario's plans, Luigi always loyally follows him into the wildest dangers any Koopa could conceive. Luigi is your basic soft touch, a defender of downtrodden mushrooms and Koopa-nabbed maidens. Naive, trusting, and innocent, Luigi is not a bumbling fool. It's just that he's so nice and straightforward, which allows him to be sucked into a Koopa scheme, a toad prank, or a Mario Madcap plan. Guys, I'm uh, the, the Sledge Brothers are breaking you out of here. Our indomitable royal heroine is definitely no old-fashioned damsel in distress who does little more than wait to be rescued. She's very much a charming, energetic, contemporary young woman chronologically a 17-year-old, but with a royal sense of responsibility and noblesse oblige that few teenagers possess. Because of her intelligence and intimate knowledge of her domain, she often takes charge of the rescue mission and comes up with the clever plan to foil King Koopa's latest plot. Her people respect and admire her. She regards the Mario brothers as her closest friends and is extremely grateful that they have left their own world to come help save hers. It's no easy task rescuing a kingdom, and what makes it even worse in Super Mario 3 is that King Koopa's kids regard Princess Toadstool as their prime target for troublemaking. Only a trained magician can touch that wand. Huh. But what if the Koopas find my house and attack? I couldn't let the princess be captured, could I? To save us all, I must use the wand! Wow! I feel like I'm a wizard already! Toad was left on his own at an early age and managed to survive on the streets of many magic lands by his quick wit and fast feet. He met the princess when he was delivering pizzas and attempting to sell encyclopedias to the Mushroom Kingdom Palace. She was so impressed by his eagerness to improve himself that she got him a job in the royal kitchen. And when King Koopa took over the Mushroom Kingdom and the princess was cast on the streets, Toad repaid her kindness by serving as her guide, loyal servant, and diplomatic advisor. He's not too sure the Mario brothers know what they're doing and often launches his own counter plan, which sometimes saves their hides and sometimes doubles their jeopardy. Toad is street smart, very bright, and totally resourceful. All in all, he's exactly the kind of mushroom you'd want guarding your flank in a fireball fight or facing a clutch of snapping piranha plants. Let me give you some more lessons on how to lie and cheat. <laughs> First you tell them a big lie to get them in your clutches. Then you squeeze them for the big payoff. Despite every devious and dastardly plot he hatches, Koopa has a certain Rodney Dangerfield-like vulnerability which makes him as lovable as he is hateable. Koopa is pure id, unmitigated selfishness running rampant in an ugly green body. He will capture, trick, bribe, threaten, attack, cast evil spells, hurl malicious insults, throw temper tantrums, and do anything else despicable and nasty to defeat the Super Marios and he has so much fun doing it, we always want to see him try again.
In Super Mario 3, Koopa fans can enjoy his humorous rantings and funny frustrations even more as he contends with his seven black sheep Koopalings. If reptiles had hair, Koopa would have pulled all his out by now. Prime Wave Clyde? Real world public enemy number one? If I wasn't, they wouldn't have put me in this here jail. This is your lucky day. King Dad just gave you a party. Huh? Got him, King Dad! As long as you're smaller than he is, Bully will push you around. His favorite sport is stealing lunches from second graders in wheelchairs. Bully is the most dangerous of the kids. The oldest, he would try to take over his dad's position as king if his dad would stop being such a big bully and let him do it. Bully has a gang, but nobody will join it. He thinks he's totally cool and loves 50s greaser music in Nintendo style. Yeah, I heard him. Did you hear him? You're a lazy bully, bully. If you don't help us, I'm gonna tattle. Big Mouth just can't stop blabbing, and his twisted talent is insult. His cutting remarks can even reduce his father to tears. Big Mouth's got a chip on his shoulder the size of the Doom Ship. He would never admit he was wrong, even though he usually is. He thinks he knows everything about everything, but what he knows is all wrong, and he always blames the other guy for his mistakes. Big Mouth loves to stir up trouble and has a needling, probing attitude that always gets it. He holds grudges against the whole world. When Koopa's villainous schemes require sheer lunacy, he calls on Kuki. A graduate of Frankenstein University, Kuki loves to construct monsters in his basement lab in Castle Koopa. He is responsible for many of the new villainous characters in SM3. He built the Doom Ship. Kuki never showers or combs his hair. He sleeps during the day, if he ever sleeps at all, eats nothing but candy and fried foods. We're sure the Mario Brothers will have a pleasant trip in dark land. <laughs> he loves to tie people up and then challenge them to a foot race. In reform school, he copied so many test papers, he got writer's claw. His hobby is counterfeiting gold coins, and he does such a great job of it that Koopa has put him in charge of the Castle Koopa treasury, where he happily spends every day cheating his brother and sister Koopalings on their allowances. When Koopa needs sneaky and devious, he calls on Cheatsy. She's snobbish, spoiled, and deceitful, and those are her good traits. A vain teen queen, Cootie Pie despises the princess and her goody two-shoes ways. King Koopa gives her everything she asks for. He turns into a totally permissive parent whenever Cootie Pie whines, I want. Anything anybody else has, Cootie Pie wants. And anything she already has, she wants two of. Cootie Pie is not that bright, but has megawatts of intensity and laser-sharp focus. When she gets hold of an idea, she does not let go. We found it! In King Dad Fart, we mess up this heist! Or Pop's gonna have to eat his words! Ah! Whoa!
While the rest of the Koopalings are in their teens, Hip and Hop are bratty six-year-olds. These twins don't go anywhere without one another and are always finishing each other's sentences. Silly and dumb, goofy and bumbling, they are always lost and have probably forgotten where they were going anyway. They flunked Cooper Garden. They wouldn't be a threat to the Marios and the Princess if it weren't for the fact that they have the most powerful magic wands and are easily manipulated by Bully and their other siblings.